MS doesn't increase the risk uh, of developing COVID-19 itself. Um, we, we don't have any reason to believe that. Um, furthermore, MS doesn't, uh, you know, we don't have any reason to believe that MS itself directly makes COVID-19 more dangerous, okay, if somebody were to develop it. However, the caveat to that is if somebody has a uh, significant neurological disability, um, they can be at higher risk for complications as with any respiratory illness. Um, and that's not specific to COVID. Um, as with any infection, you know, the, the uh, generally infections, fever can make underlying symptoms of MS worse. So uh, somebody, if they were to be infected, they could notice that, okay, if they're having a fever, the chronic MS symptoms that they have uh, may be more troublesome, more prominent, um, such as more trouble with fatigue, cognition, trouble with mobility, um, trouble with vision. Um, and this is uh, most likely uh, can get better after the fever uh, goes down, um, uh, uh, what we call UTOPS phenomenon. Um, and then finally, the only other sort of potential risk out there, and again, this goes for, for many different viruses, um, is that we know that whenever somebody does have a virus and the immune system is revved up, that can sometimes predispo, you know, pr precipitate an MS relapse. Um, uh, it's very rare, but it can happen. And we've actually seen a situation, um, a situation of that um, just, uh, you know, just since this all started. So I think, you know, that, that is a very, um, very good question and one question that we've all been asking um, and that patients have been asking. So one has to consider a lot of different uh, factors when, 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 uh, when we're trying to answer such a question, such as, okay, patient age, comorbidities, um, uh, the subtype of MS, um, and disease severity. And um, you have to remember, uh, that there's a definite risk of, of MS uh, relapses, um, but only a possible risk that these medications can negatively impact one's ability to fight off this infection and make it more dangerous. Um, and because of this, the you know I generally advise patients to continue uh, their, their disease-modifying therapies. This is also a recommendation, a recommendation from, uh, from institutions like the National MS Society. Um, Certainly, when speaking in particular about cell depleting therapies, um, there's a bit more uh, concern about, about potential risks, specifically with ocrelizumab, with rituximab. And in those situations, again, you have to take uh, consideration of, of the age of the patient, the subtype, the severity. Um, for example, if somebody is you know, 65 years old and they're on ocrevus for, for progressive MS that has been pretty stable or, 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 or very, very slowly progressive, uh, the risk of medication delay in, the, in, that, in that sort of situation is probably low. Um, and so in that sort of situation, okay, not only, so we don't even know if, if, um, if delaying another, you know, the, the, the next dose of Ocrevus is actually beneficial um, because it may take a long time for the immune system to, to reconstitute. But it also, you have to consideration exposure, you have to consider uh, exposure as well. Um, so even by going to an infusion center or having somebody come to their home to give them an infusion, um, there's a potential risk in that. And so uh, delaying, you know, here in New York City, we've had a lot of, uh, you know, we've, we've had a, a quite a, quite a, uh, an issue with COVID-19 and hopefully over the next uh, couple of months, one to two months, we're going to see a, a, a a significant downtrend um, and a significant lower risk. So for some patients that have been relatively stable, again, the, 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 the older patients, the people with progressive MS, um, I have uh, recommended a, a little bit of a delay. Um, one to two months is not a, not a high risk for those patients. And I think that that's totally reasonable to do, um, if only to limit exposure uh, during the infusion. Um, to you know, uh, allow for other resources to be used elsewhere um, from a global health perspective, and then of course uh, potentially uh, allow uh, allowing the immune system to reconstitute a bit um, in the uh, you know potential given the potential risk of these patients to develop the infection. 
Um, the caveat is that, again, we don't know how long COVID will be around. Um, I think in areas where there are big hotspots and, and we're seeing a large number right now, hopefully in a, in a, in a month or two, things will, be, things will have calmed down. You know, MS does not take a break during the during the COVID epidemic, and um, there have been um, certainly people people do have new onset MS, uh, new uh, new relapses, new diagnoses, and um, uh, you know the the, the discussion uh, we always have a discussion about risks and benefits of certain disease modifying therapies, um, uh, and the discussion is a little bit different uh, in the COVID era. Um, so I think I, I would, I would, uh, I generally advise delaying new starts of, of MS treatments in people with relatively mild disease um, that haven't been active in the recent past or that the, the disease has not been active in recent past, so that's new lesions or, or, or recent relapses. Um, again, you take that example of a middle-aged person with slowly progressive MS um, without relapses. Well, this is not the time to start that person on Ocrevus. Um, or 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 uh, uh, saponamod for that matter, um, and 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 that that kind of patient can certainly wait until after the brunt of this epidemic. Um, if somebody has uh, has had recent disease activity, uh, though, so new lesions or, or relapses, I absolutely I wouldn't recommend a delay of more than several weeks because. It is a bit, uh, it, it, it certainly is unpredictable. We don't know when the next relapse will come and that can leave uh, uh, permanent neurological disability. And then the other aspect of this is we don't know how long COVID will be an issue. So how long do we wait? Um, and, uh, you know, waiting several months uh, is, is, is not a good idea either. Um, uh, the other aspect of, of starting a, a new medication is to discuss what medication we start. And I think um, the, the option for, for people who are looking into that and into who are discussing new medications with patients and patients themselves, the option is to, is to start a medication that is less immunosuppressive and doesn't carry as much potential risk. And, and um, I'm certainly seeing, you know, over the years, we've had a, a little bit of a, uh, a, a movement towards um, uh, induction therapies, um, uh, higher efficacy therapies, and I, and I do see a little bit of a, of a movement of the needle back towards escalation therapy. So if somebody with mild to moderate um, uh, MS, we have to consider some of the older medications that are around, some that have potentially less immunosuppressive uh, effects um, and may be safer, uh, at least in the, in the, in the, in the short term. That is uh, another very good question. Uh, we know that steroids um, are the mainstay of acute treatment after an MS relapse, um, very important. Um, that being said, steroids have, have been proven really to hasten recovery from a relapse. They've never uh, been really proven to improve the ultimate recovery um, at, 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 the, at the end. And so um, I think Again, we're shifting. We have a little bit of movement from of the needle to have a, a little bit of a higher threshold um, for recommending steroids if somebody has a very mild relapse. Um, whereas, uh, so be before COVID nineteen, um, uh, you know, if somebody had a sensory relapse that was relatively mild, sort of it was a discussion um, of whether we should use steroids or not. Um, currently, if there's if there if it's a mild relapse. Um, doesn't uh, impact uh, a patient's day to day, um, then then I would recommend against steroids, and, and they're two, twofold. One is we don't know how that impacts if somebody were to get COVID nineteen. We don't know how that impacts their ability to to, to fight off this uh, this virus. And two, just purely from a global health resources uh, perspective. Um, and then of course, uh, you know, risk of exposure if somebody's getting IV steroids again. Uh, they either go to an infusion center or they get admitted to the hospital. And, and these are things that we don't necessarily need to do in the current, uh, current situation. Uh, 
I think it's true. I mean, COVID will be around for at least uh, a, a few months, um, and certainly it will be a challenge. Um, hopefully, at least in 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 where where I am right now, which is New York, um, it'll be less of an issue in a couple of months, but still still it will be a concern. Um, and I think uh, you know, as I mentioned before, we're certainly seeing a a, a bit of a shift uh, towards escalation therapy. So, uh, especially when it comes to mild to moderate MS. So, if somebody has uh, mild symptoms, um, you know, we talk about some of those older medications, injectable medications, um, some of the lower risk oral medications um, for mild to moderate MS. Um, that being said. Patients that worry me from the MS perspective, uh, those with highly active MS or, or who are occurring disability, absolutely, I still recommend highly efficacious uh, therapies like natalizumab, Um and and I think you know the take home uh, you know the thing that we have to remember is that the absolute the, the there's a definite risk of, of MS and and in highly active MS it's an absolute risk. And that certainly uh, outweighs the potential risk of the, any of these medications impacting recovery from this virus. Um, you know, as far as the potential risk of, of, of these medications, right now we have no data um, on which medications may be, uh, may be safer than others. And, and um, uh, we, we, we have educated guesses um, based on other infections that are out there. Um, and risk risk for other infections, but we have no data on how uh, any of these MS medications uh, interacts or, or impacts the ability of somebody's uh, somebody's immune system to 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 uh, fight off this virus. We will know more um, as as MS registries become available, um, and and some are already in the works.